guys, my name is Ashutosh Hathidra and I'm currently a machine learning engineer at TikTok. First of all, I would like to thank Raj and the entire team of Fizura for giving me an opportunity to create content for the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about my experience and learnings as a machine learning engineer. Specifically, I will talk about three aspects. I'm going to talk about what exactly do I work at TikTok. The second thing I'll talk about is Let's say if you want to pursue a machine learning career in recommendation space, then how you can get started to learn about it. And the last thing is how you can effectively execute experimentation when you work as a machine learning engineer, because ML engineering is all about executing experiments and how you can do that effectively. So we are going to talk about one good strategy of doing that. So let's get started. So the first thing is what exactly do I work at TikTok? So usually in any of the social media that you might have seen, we have two types of contents. One is the organic content that individual, that individual creators often post. And the other type of content is advertisement content, which advertisers would post to advertise their products. So usually we have two recommendation systems that is working behind the scene. One recommendation engine, which would generate a list of content recommendation and the other and the other recommendation engine, which would generate list of ads that we want to show to the users. So basically it is content plus ads. I specifically work on ads recommendation at TikTok. Now, how do we recommend it? So it is not that simple as having one model, which would recommend all ads to all the users. Instead, we have a sequence of models that would perform effective recommendation over the ads. So what happens is this, we can understand it with this diagram. So when we get the request from user device, we effectively find a bunch of ads which are most relevant to the user. Now our platform has millions of ads. So we need to go and we need to design a model that can select say 100 ads from those millions of ads. And once we do that, the second model would be would apply filtering over it. So we will select most relevant 50 ads out of those 100 selected ads. And once we have this 50 most relevant ads, what we will do is we will rank those ads. So what we essentially want to do is we want to rank these ads in certain order so that the most relevant ad is on the top, which the user will see at the first time and the least relevant ad will be shown at the bottom. And this is how the entire recommendation system would work. And if we talk about myself, then I work on this ranking domain. So we have a ranking model that essentially rank different ads and we, uh, our goal is to improve that model. Now, why do we want to improve that model? We want to improve the model so that we can improve our business metrics. Now, uh, the business metrics can be revenue, which is the cost to the company. The advertisers will pay certain amount to the company to show ads on TikTok, and that's revenue. Then the second thing is advertiser value. How much value does the advertiser get when they post the ad on our platform? That value can be from people buying their products or people buying their subscriptions and etc. And the third matrix is latency. How fast our models can generate predictions. So what is the latency of the serving of the model? So these are some metrics. There are like a lot more other metrics as well, but this is to give you a perspective on what we want to essentially improve. And how do we improve that? So we run some experiments on the model and the experiments can be related to like, we do some structural changes to the model and then we design our own loss functions. We design our own optimizers. We change the training strategy or learning strategy. And then we perform certain experiments and based on those experiments, if the model is improving the business metrics, then we decide to launch it. And that's how we will operate the entire experimentation life cycle. So defining it as a whole, this is what I actually do as a machine learning engineer. Now moving on to the second point, which is how to get started with an ML aspect of rec recommendation system. So for example, let's say you are a student or a, let's say an early ML engineer, and you want to learn about recommendation system, uh, and you don't just want to get theoretical concepts, but you also want to understand the industrial aspect uh, of the recommendation system or how a big recommendation systems like Google or Meta, TikTok works. If you want to know about that, then what is the correct, what is a good way to learn these? 
so this is one of the good strategies uh, which we can talk about so the first thing is basically there are two types of recommendation system content based filtering and collaborative filtering now what happens in at the industry scale is that we often create hybrid recommendation system which combine these both of these concepts but before you get started you at least should understand what these what the meaning of these two words are so at least you should get started with understanding the meanings of these two you can read research papers about it you can probably read some articles and good blogs about it and that and that way you can understand the meaning of these two words once you do that you should start from the basic very basic logistic regression not a very fancy thing if you start from a very complicated thing you will often find difficulty relating it to the recommendation system and how actual recommendation would be generated so that's why i would suggest that you should start with the very simple model like logistic regression then once you understand the mathematics of the logistic regression then you will understand that there is a problem with the logistic regression and to solve that problem you will have to understand the next complicated model which is polynomial regression and then once you understand that one you will observe that there is still a, a little bit problem with that and to solve that problem you will move on to the next complicated model which is factorization machines and field ever factorization machines so these two concept which is fm and ffm are very important in the recommendation space and these concepts are so important for feature interaction that almost all the recommendation systems that you see today like google search like google search meta or in, uh, instagram tiktok all of them at some point and in some model uses these two concepts which is fm and ffm modeling techniques and these modeling techniques are not so advanced these are very basic modeling techniques that you can understand very easily once you understand how these primitive techniques work then you can move on to understanding more complex interaction models like deep interest network search induced models of course transformers and then coaction networks so these networks are very important and are being used nowadays in almost all the recommendation engines if you want to work as a machine learning engineer in recommendation space or if you at least want to get into this field and if you are interviewing to a company then i would highly suggest you to look at these models and understand their recommendation system aspects what exactly do they contribute into the recommendation space once you understand these models you should also have a knowledge about the loss functions what different loss functions can you use like binary cross entropy or focal cross entropy you you should also get some understanding about optimizers like adam optimizer or adagrad or adamom and how these optimizers actually improve the learning process of your model you should also learn about the offline matrix which you will look at to check whether your model is actually improving or not and some of those metrics can be roc auc or calibration or prediction bias etc you can also look at some of the matrix uh, metrics like precision recall and the log loss etc if you have knowledge about these things then you have established a base on which you can now read in depth about the other recommendation modeling techniques and the research which is currently going on and not just that you can also start building your own models to learn or at least to prototype and once you understand these concepts then you can read these five papers which are considered to be a foundational papers in the recommendation space for example this first paper is from youtube and explains how youtube generates recommendation although this paper is not very recent but still it gives it will give you good understanding of how youtube generates the recommendation for your videos then these two papers from microsoft are very important and it and shows the exact strategy and modeling techniques which you can use to improve your recommendation system in the industry scale like for example wide and deep learning is a widely popular technique which is being used nowadays and this offline and online evaluations paper explain you the importance of offline evaluation and online evaluation for your model before you launch it to the production and these two papers from facebook explains the details about the facebook recommendation systems and they talk about multiple models like ctr model cvr model and the last paper from alibaba talks about optimizing the cost per click 
in display advertising reading these papers would not only enhance your machine learning knowledge about the recommendation system but it will also help you understand the recommendation system terminology like what is cost per click or what is cdr what is cvr etc it will also equip you with the terminology which is used for recommendation system i will provide links of all the papers that we talked about in the description section of this video i would strongly suggest to take a look at those papers and dive deeper into it if you want to understand recommendation systems now moving on to the third point which is the effective experimentation so how would you perform experimentation effectively such that you can be productive as well as efficient at the same time so the strategy that i often use is called first bfs and then dfs so what is this what is this first dfs then dfs strategy so it is something like this so let's say you have a machine learning model and there is a particular algorithmic problem with that machine learning model so how would you solve that problem so let's say you did some literature review and you read some papers and by reading those papers you came up with three ideas of solving that problem and in the machine learning terminology we call them hypothesis so you came up with three different hypotheses now we want to test this hypothesis and we want to run experiments to verify that whether this hypothesis works on our model or not so what would you do so first you will explore the breadth which is uh, you explore all the experiments so what you will do is you you will create one experiment for each of the hypotheses and then let's say you created these experiments and uh, you got some results based on that and you got some offline evaluation matrix based on that and based on those metrics you found out that experiment 2 and experiment 3 is not solving your problem which you want to solve then what you would do is you would reject those two hypotheses and you would then execute exhaustive set of experiments only for hypothesis one so what did we do we first explored whether all these experiments are working or not with this initial set of experiments and then we established that okay hypothesis one is working good and hypothesis two and hypothesis three is not performing well th then we can go into depth of hypothesis one and we can run exhaustive set of experiments to solve our problem uh, now this is not any way a standard st strategy which is established in the research setting but personally for me i found out that this strategy is pretty decent and useful when you want to iterate fast and also do converge at a solution very fast now the second point that i want to mention is about documentation so let's say you if you are working in a team of let's say five engineers or ten engineers so what is the effective way to communicate between team members in the industry setting you cannot have a meeting every day with the team members and you also cannot communicate very effectively throughout through messages or chats so what is a good way to communicate a good way to communicate is a documentation so how would you write a documentation and you maintain that so that whenever a team member asks you about the progress or if you want to discuss anything with a team member you can just forward the documentation to the team member and they would be able to understand what exactly do you mean now how would you write the documentation so your documentation should consist of these four things the first thing is what hypothesis have you considered so you might have started your experiment iterations based on certain hypothesis so you should write down that hypothesis then you should write down the technical solution details what technical details have you explored have you read any papers have you read any articles and also mention those in the technical solution then you should mention the implementation details and anything specific that you have considered for the implementation and the final thing is what experiments have you conducted on what was the offline evaluation conclusion for the experiments and what is the online evaluation conclusion for those experiments and why certain experiments work and why doesn't it work and you should also mention about uh, those sub hypothesis as well so that is the second point now the third point is weekly brainstorming session whenever you are working in a research group or uh, you are working in a team of engineers it is high likely that you would focus on only the one thing that you are working on so you will most likely focus on a single model but because of that sometimes what happen is that we lose the overall broader picture and because of that we often lack the perspective that we should have to solve a problem and that is why i found 
that having a weekly brainstorming session with senior engineers or managers is often helpful in giving you that perspective and fresh ideas which you can utilize in the next set of experiments. Now the fourth point is you should be aware about your product in detail. Let's say I'm working on an ads recommendation model and I don't know where exactly that, that model will be used in the actual product. Then I will lack at many of the details and solving the problem would be much ambiguous because there might be some modeling techniques which might be only associated to a CVR model or CDR model or value optimization model etc. But if I use those techniques into a different model then it won't work and because of that I highly suggest that you read internal documentation, in-depth papers which explains and gives you an understanding of your product in detail. And the last point that I want to make is to cultivate a good understanding of infra. Now, as a machine learning engineer, you will not be expected to work on real infrastructure de development, but you should be aware of it. What cloud infrastructure we use, what technology stack we use for data ingestion, model loading, model graph loading, parameter optimization, parameter server, etc. This will give you an understanding of designing a training strategy or to optimize your workflow in case if you want to solve a problem that has things like high latency problems or catastrophic forgetting and things like that. You don't need the knowledge to develop the infra, but you at least should have a knowledge of the technology stack that is being used in the infrastructure so that you can solve your machine learning problems considering that in mind. That is all I have for this video. I hope this video would help many prospective ML engineers. And if you think this video is helpful, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. We will be back with another video. Until then, stay safe.